Hello, I'm a welder, former welding instructor, and my name is Randall Roof. And today I want to talk to you about welding hood shades. That's right. This one is a speed glass. It's a multi-shade, which means you can adjust it from 9 to 13 in darkness. And whether you're using a speed light helmet like this or a standard, uh, standard helmet with just a piece of glass that's a certain thickness, or dark, I should say shade, of uh, protection, there is the important question of how dark or what shade of lens should I be using. And that really depends on, one, the process, but more importantly, how bright the light is. And generally speaking, we have a chart, or a ba basic, basic chart that I, I'm going to tell you here in a minute. But before we get into the, the chart, I have to keep in mind, some people's eyes are better than others, so... And more, some people's eyes are more sensitive to light than others. So, I mean, there's some... The chart is just a guide, okay? It's not an exact thing. It's a, it's a general guide. Now, when you're doing oxyacetylene welding, uh, normally you're using a shade 5, okay? There are some shade 4s out there, but generally speaking, it's a shade 5. Now, when you step up to uh, shielded metal, gas metal, gas tungsten, or your stick making TIG, um, you're going to be starting off with shade 9, and it's uh, normally going up to 13. Uh, there are some 14 and 15s out there, but that's for a really intense bright light. Um, but the general rule of thumb is, um, on 9 and 10, up, up to 100 amps, you can use a 9 or 10, depending on what you're uh, comfortable with. Some people, like I said, being more sensitive. Um, anything over 100, though, generally is 11. Anything over 200 is generally a 12. Anything over three, uh, 300 is a 13. Anything over 400 should be a 14. Anything over 500 should be a 15. And this only, this only goes up to 13. Um, but keep in mind, most welding machines that people are using don't, I mean, you normally don't go over 300 amps. Um, there, I have used some before where they go up to 400 where it's some intense, very intense rapid spray transfer with MIG. I mean, you're, you're transferring thick wire at a fast speed and you want to get a lot of depth to your penetration. Where I have used 400 before and the best I have was a 13, so I had to make do with it. But uh, I wish I had a 14. And part of the time I did, was doing that, I did get a, I borrowed somebody else's that had a 14 because it was darker. And I felt, I felt more comfortable using that 14. And I had, couldn't use, at that time I couldn't use this one because it was, wasn't dark enough. Um, but part of the time I may do a 13, part of the time I bought somebody else out of 14. So, um, but the general rule, like I said, the general rule is under 100, you can use 9 or 10 to your preference. Uh, anything over 100, you want to use 11. Anything over 200, you use a uh, 12. Anything over uh, 300, you want to use a 13. Anything under 400, you want to use a 14, and so on. Um, but that's the general general scale. And again, like I said, it's just a general scale, and you can adjust it to your. Um, that's one of the benefits of this technology is you can adjust it. And like I said, if you don't have the, uh, if you're using really high amperage, for the special, you want to make sure you have the protection you need because you you only get one set of eyeballs in this life, uh, generally speaking, <laughs> until they perfect some surgeries. But, um, so you want to protect your eyes at all times, obviously, and uh, this is a good way to do it, and uh, like I said, you always want to have, if, you, if, you, if, you're, if you have a lot of, if your eyes are really runny, or they start to feel dry, you definitely need to take a break, get some eye drops, and get something that's darker. I mean, your body's going to tell you if it's too bright. And if it's too bright, you need, to, like I said, take care of your eyes. If you need to, get some eye drop to moisten them and get a darker shade or turn it up or whatever you have to do to get a darker shade. So that's the general formula and some general information. I hope this is helpful and it's something you're always going to need to know in your welding career. So until next time, I'm Elder Randall and Bruce. Thanks for watching. Have a good day and may God bless you. Remember, Practice doesn't make perfect, but it does make it better.